Hello and welcome to our discussion on financial statements. In this example, we will try to convert these business decisions into financial statements. And we will use these financial statements to understand the effect on the book value per share. Book value per share. So started business with cash 20,000. It is a receipt. The business is receiving that money. It is not an income but a source. So started business with cash will be shown in the cash flow statement and a balance sheet as a source. Then the company received a loan. So once again it is a receipt, it's a receipt and that receipt is a cash inflow to the extent of 80,000 and it is not an income but a source. So we can see that both these receipts are different types of the sources. A receipt can be capital or a receipt can be a liability. In the process we will see different types of receipts. Now purchase goods for cash, so payment made to the extent of 50,000 and this is acquisition of asset. So at this moment the stock purchased is 50,000. So it is an asset which resulted in outflow of cash or outflow of cash has resulted in creation of asset. You also received, you purchased stock on credit. So here we are purchasing stock but we have not pay, we did not pay any money. So if you observe this, acquisition of stock resulted in cash outflow to the extent of 50 and creation of liability. Whenever a firm purchases an asset, it may result in outflow of cash or creation of liability, in this case creditor. The other forms of acquisition we will see as we move along. Purchase plant on stock on credit. We purchase acquired another asset to the next for 60,000 and this also has resulted in creation of a liability, no outflow of cash. So till now we have received some cash which is not an income, we made some payments which are not expenses but a payment has resulted in creation of asset and creation of assets have also resulted in liabilities. Now whatever stock available with us, we sold the entire stock for cash and this is income to the extent of 100,000. We received money and this entire receipt is for cash. So therefore it's an income and a cash flow for the period, cash flow for the period. And whenever there is a sale, there has to be cost of goods, cost corresponding and that cost corresponding is, the corresponding cost is the cost of goods sold. As a result, the cost of goods sold will become zero. You can see the changes in the stock. Acquired stock on for cash, acquired stock on credit and entire stock sold and the corresponding sales price is 100,000. We will pay interest because it is an accrual principle when there is an obligation on interest payment you are bound to recognize that interest as an expense for the period matching principle and accrual principle. Whether you want to pay it or not is a managerial decision. If you don't pay that, there has to be a liability 
a liability has to be created an expense not paid is a liability but if you decide to pay fully if we decide to pay fully the liability is zero so it's up to us we decided not to pay but create a liability so all transactions done we will find profit the profit to the ex profit will be incomes minus expenses expenses is 78000 so profit in this case is a profit before tax profit before tax is 78 expense sales 100000 so pbt is equal to 100000 minus 78000 let us assume that we are also paying tax on 30 percent but observe this assumption for the time being we will assume the tax to be calculated on the on pbt later on we'll change that assumption but for the time being tax is calculated as on the pbt rate into pbt let us also assume that we pay the tax so if tax is not paid then we create a liability called tax payable but in this case tax payable is zero okay tax payable will be zero because we have paid fully that tax of that year so 6600 minus 6600 so outflow of cash and no liability to that extent and then we'll have PBT minus tax is PAT. PAT is equal to PAT is equal to 22,000 minus 6,600. If no information given about PAT, we can make an assumption that entire PAT is retained. The management can decide to distribute the profit or retain the profit if it is retained then it becomes a source profit is a profit earned during the period the retained profit is a profit not distributed but retained in the business so it becomes a source then we'll find cash in hand cash in hand is equal to cash available minus the cash payment so cash in hand for the period is equal to 143,000 okay 143,000 and this cash in hand is a balance sheet item and therefore it is transferred to the balance sheet we can see that two important items of the balance sheet the retained profit comes from the income statement and cash in hand from the cash flow statement. So all transactions done, the summation of the sources should be equal to the summation of the assets, which is in this case 203,400. So a set of transactions can be converted into financial statements. This we are aware of. But now let us observe the understand the impact of these decisions, these business decisions on the financial performance indicators like the book value per share. So if you observe at a point of time we always say that the assets of the business should be equal to should be equal to equity and liabilities so in this example the total assets is 203400 supported by equity which is capital plus retained profit and liabilities which are the rest of the items 10% loan creditors mr x interest payable tax payable all are liabilities 
So assets are equal to equity plus liability. And uh, since the face value of the share is given, the capital is 20,000. So the number of shares is equal to capital divided by the face value. And the book value per share which we mentioned here is equal to equity divided by number of shares. So the book value per share we calculated here as as 2 which is which is equity okay that is 35,400 divided by number of shares that is 20,000 so 1.77 is the book value per share that means if the business is closed now as per the books the shareholder will get 1.77 rupees per share whether actually they will get that much or not depends on the market value of the shares so with the assumption that entire profit is retained we have created a book value per share as 1.77 thank you very much